Asia Conference for ministers and professionals. This has impacted not only Deeper Life members, but many others from the nominations across the globe. Pastor Kumui is a gift that keeps on giving. For him, increasing age has translated to ever deeper depths of ministerial grace and upward movement. It is all about the Bible-based revival alone. Let us join the man of God, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui, to learn and preach the Bible, pray the Bible, and leave the Bible. The GCK Ministers and Professionals Conference, the Tuesday Leadership Meeting, and the Saturday Workers Meeting all form the spiritual tonic and vitamin to develop a strong spiritual backbone in a challenging world before Jesus comes to take us home. Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumuyi says, you too can become a giant spiritual. Join the growing army to learn at the master's feet as we earnestly contend for the faith once delivered unto the saints. the Lord. Church, I said praise the Lord. I welcome everyone this morning service in Jesus' name. And I pray the Lord will bless your heart, bless your soul, and bless your life in Jesus' name. Are you ready for blessing? Say, I am ready. Father, we thank you today. We thank you for the worship service. We thank you for your word. And we thank you for your spirit. We thank you because you are alive and you are mightily present here. We pray, Lord, you expose and expound your word to everyone at the point of our need today in Jesus' name. And we pray you enrich every life, enrich every believer. And those who are coming for the first time, I pray, Lord, their portion of blessing you grant unto them in Jesus' name. And for pastors and leaders, workers, members, everybody, Lord, I pray none of us will go back home empty-handed in Jesus' name. The blessing in the word and the prophecy in the word. And the promise in the word will be ours one by one in Jesus' name. But thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Give God another amen before you sit down. We're coming to James chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 13. James chapter 5 verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with all in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick. You missed an amen there. Yeah. And the Lord shall raise him up. And if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. And pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man, tell me, availeth much. Elias, Elijah. Was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And he drank not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth a fruit. Today, as we look at those verses of Scripture, it talks to the believer. It talks to the sick. It talks to those who are suffering. And it gives us the promises of God. 
and it gives us assurance that as you call upon the Lord, your prayer will be answered. That as I call upon the name of the Lord for myself, for you, for the church, for anyone in need, there is assurance that God says he will answer. He will wipe away our tears. He will take away our sorrows. All the challenges and all the bodies we have, our time of release has now come. And for every afflicted saint, and for everyone in any adverse situation, and anyone that is going through some challenges in life, these are verses that give us assurance that that thing will not last for long. It will not last beyond the prayer of faith. It will not last beyond the mention of the name of Jesus. It will not last beyond the day we take hold of the horns of the altar and we say, today I will be blessed. And today those problems are gone in Jesus' name. Look at that verse 16 again. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. As we look at these verses of Scripture, I'm talking to you today on the power of faith and perseverance in prayer. The power of faith and perseverance in prayer. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the patient perseverance of the afflicted saint. The patient perseverance of the afflicted saint. There's no murmuring. There's no despair. There's no discouragement. And there is no spirit of running away, running away from home, running away from the church, running away from God. And there is no allowance for suicide. There's no allowance for destroying ourselves. There is patient perseverance of the afflicted saint. Point number two, the precious promises for adverse situations. The situations will come across. They are the crossroads of life. It's there for the young. It's there for the middle-aged person. It's there for the believer. It's there for the unbeliever. It's there for leaders. It's there for followers. It's there for even a family. And sometimes it's there for a local church and for the old church. Adverse situations. And yet... There are promises in the word of God. And as we look at those promises in the word of God for adverse situations, I need to tell you something. Just reading them will bring performance in your life. Just hearing them. I didn't know that was there. It gives you hope. It energizes your faith. And then it broadens your rising. Then you understand, although you thought you were cornered, you thought you were confined, you thought you were hedged in, the promises of God will open the door wide before you and tell you, here is the way of escape. And you rise up, you escape every adverse situation in Jesus' name. The precious promises for adverse situations. Number three, the powerful prayer. Different kinds of prayer. Many different kinds of prayer. But there is one that is prevailing. There is one that is powerful. There is one that removes every mountain, the powerful prayer of his appointed servants. His appointed servants, like in the, in the days of old, 
He appointed him Moses for the children of Israel. Bring them out of the captivity. And because that's the will of the Lord, it was done. You will come out. Out of every prison, you will come out. And out of every predicament, out of every confinement, you are coming out in Jesus' name. Appointed servants of the Lord. Appointed in a family, like the father in a family. Appointed over a local church, like the local pastor in that local church. Appointed by God over the general church. You might even call it a national church. And when that one appointed by God, when he prays for the people, he is appointed over. There's going to be explosion of power. And I can tell you this morning, there's a spiritual supernatural bulldozer caterpillar that will shake everything shakeable in your life that will remove every mountain in your life that will crush the power of evil in your life and today everything that binds you will be broken down in jesus name the powerful prayer of his appointed servants come to point number one point number one the patient perseverance of the afflicted saint. We're coming back to James chapter 5. And I read from verse 7. James chapter 5, verse 7. It says, Be patient therefore, brethren, children of God, saints of God, afflicted saints. Be patient, patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husband man waited for the precious fruit of the earth, and has long patience for it, until he receive the early and the latter rain, until the church, until the people of God, until the flock of God receive the early rain and the latter rain, there will be showers of blessing. Be also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh, grudge not one another. You know, it's so easy when there are problems, when there are challenges, when there's affliction, and we don't know where the problems are coming from. We don't know where the challenges are coming from. And we don't know where the affliction is coming from. And you examine your heart, you examine your life, you examine your surrounding, you examine your actions, and you say, I, I can't find the reason for this. It's very easy then to begin to grudge innocent people, grudge even people who are a blessing to you, and begin to grudge people that you think, because you don't know who is causing the affliction. And therefore you grudge this and grudge that. Even the people that stretch hands of help and hope to you, you grudge them. So easy. But you'll stop grudging anybody. Did you say amen to that? Yeah. Grudge not one another. The problem is not from them. But the solution is coming from on high. You'll overcome that devil that is causing the problem. Those demons causing the problem, you'll overcome them. Your brother is not your problem. Your sister is not your problem. Your a fellow believer is not your problem. Grudge not one against another, brethren. Lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge standeth at the door. Take my brethren. The prophets, those who have come before us, take my brethren, the prophets who are spoken in the name of the Lord for an example of suffering affliction. 
It says you are not the first person to go through the kind of thing you are going through. Others have gone through. And they went through successfully. And they have blazed the trail, the path before us. And if they overcame, thank God, I see an overcomer before me there. You will overcome in Jesus' name. Take them for an example of suffering affliction and of patience. Behold, we count them happy. He tells us which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job. And you will not go through, you cannot go through 1%, 1 over 100 of what Job went through. And yet he was patient. You have heard of the patience of Job. And you have seen the end, that means the outcome, the performance, the result, the conclusion by the Lord that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercies. He just spoke about Job now. He had problem Job. And the wife was not the problem. The friends were not the problem. The servants were not the problem. The problem was Satan. But he didn't know. He didn't know. Like many people today, challenge, affliction, problem, all will see is the roaring of the sea. All we see is the noise in the air. All we see is the turmoil and the confusion and the conflict in the land. I was think is this or that or that causing the problem. It was Satan. But even though he didn't know, was seeing the patience of Job. The patient perseverance of the afflicted saints. Job chapter 1, I read from verse 20, patient perseverance. And Job is given to us as a worthy example by the Spirit of the Lord. Job chapter 1, verse 20, then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and he fell upon the ground, tell me, and worshipped. You know, there are people, they will not come to worship at such a time. Look at what happened to the family. Look at the one that died. Look at the fire that burnt everything that he had. And look at all the servants destroyed. Look at all his cattle, all his herds destroyed. The people that will say, if life is like this, no more worship, no more prayer, no more singing, no more serving the Lord. And he worshipped and said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, he said, when I came into this world, I didn't have anything. I didn't have shelter, I didn't have job, I didn't have money, I didn't have servants, I didn't have cattle, I didn't have all these things that the fire destroyed. Okay, the Lord gave. I didn't force him to give me. He gave me of his own free volition. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. He said, what's the big deal? He gave me. And he had his reasons for giving me, and he's taking it away. And he has his reason for taking it away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I pray God will give us grace. In the New Testament, we have greater grace, greater understanding, greater knowledge. And we see Calvary, and we see the provision of Calvary. And Job never saw anything like that, and yet he had patient perseverance in his affliction in all this job sinned not not charged god foolishly james tells us 
who have seen the patience of Job and who have seen the end result from the Lord. Job chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 9. Job chapter 2. Reading from verse 9. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain than integrity cause God and die. Hold on. Before you condemn the wife of Job. All their children had died as the house fell on them. Ten of them. In chapter 1. She said nothing. All the cattle, all the herds, all the property, everything. Fire came from the sky. And the person that, re that reported that said, the fire of God came down, burnt everything. She said nothing. All the servants were gone. All the children were gone. The property, the building is gone at home. And the bundle of joy she had, everything had gone. She said nothing. Only Job said God gave, God has taken away. She was quiet. And now in chapter 2, the sin descended on the husband Job. Boils all over. Pains all over. Scratching himself with his support shed. And he was lying on ashes. And when she saw her husband Job in that condition, he said, are you still going to hold on to integrity, sincerity, faithfulness, righteousness, holiness? Are you still going to remain steadfast? This is too much. She couldn't go to the end of the road. Well, thank God for Job. Thank you for my brother. Thank God for my brother there. Thank God for my sister there. You'll get to the end of the road. Yeah. We're going to see the end of this matter. Yeah. This affliction will not be forever. Yeah. We're not going to open our mouth and say anything negative against God, against Christ, against the Holy Ghost, against the Bible, against the church, against leadership, against our family, Whatever it takes, we seal up our mouth. And we look up to God and we know our hell is near. It's as near as the end of the service today. Verse 10, and he said unto her, Thou speakest, as one of the foolish women speakest. I thought, I, I didn't know you could say that. For me to curse God, if I curse God and die, you want to send me to hell. It means I abandon God, I curse God, I push God away, and then he kills me, I die, and I go to hell. How could you talk like that? What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God, and shall we not receive evil? In all this, did not Job sin with his sleep? Somebody say, Amen. Amen. Let me come back to the wife. What she said, she took it back. As the husband said, you talk like one of the foolish women. I expected something higher, something greater. From you, you shouldn't have said that. There was no reply. And there was no insult, no assault. There was no complaint. She didn't say, okay, if that's the way you want to live, you want to keep serving God in this condition, count me out. I pack my load and go. They didn't separate, you know. And they didn't divorce. And the woman never opened her mouth at any other time to say anything negative. And at the end of Job, the book of Job, 
when God rebuked the three friends of Job, who spoke and spoke and spoke, he never, God the Almighty and God the righteous judge never said anything against the wife. She said it because of the condition. She was sorry when the husband replied her. I shouldn't have said that. And she kept quiet all the way through. She was still the one preparing this food. She was still the one preparing, bringing the water. She was still the one taking care of those three friends that came to Job. Eventually, just one sentence in a moment of time. And don't condemn her permanently. It wasn't a permanent situation with her. She kept her mouth for the rest of the time. Maybe you said something foolish yesterday or last week or last month. You repented of it. God has forgiven and forgotten. It will not be remembered against you anymore in Jesus' name. Chapter 5 of Job. I'm reading from verse 6. Chapter 5, verse 6. Although affliction cometh not forth of the dust, neither does trouble spring out of the ground, yet man is born unto trouble as the sparks fly upward. I would seek unto God. I would seek unto God. I'm not going to run away from God because of the trouble sparking up here, sparking up there. And every part of the body is feeling a burning sensation. As it's as if fire is burning. One, one would even prefer to die than to live. All the same, I would seek unto, the, unto God. Unto God will I commit my case, which doeth great things and unsearchable. Marvelous things without number. I am still expectant. And today, whatever you have gone through and whatever problem you have brought here, I am expectant for you. And you must be expectant for yourself in Jesus' name. Amen. Chapter 13 of Job, you have heard and now you are hearing of the patience of Job. 